March 22nd, 5.24pm, Wright & Co. Law Offices. Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya. <laughs> there, there, pearls. I, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Look, it'll be all right. Everything may still work out. The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't because Mr. Ongard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. <laughs> Cheer up, we don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. I you're right. Mystic Maya is in a much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right, so... Hey, you guys! Glad I caught you, pal. M Mr. Scruffy Detective. Oh boy. Looks like Detective Gumshoe has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. It's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now, and I came to talk to you, pal. But we're kind of busy right now. So, what are you going to do from now on? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So, do you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that! Uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I... I don't have anything coming in at all until my next payday. W what are you talking about? You don't have another payday. I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work for you at your place, pal. <laughs> S say what? You'll be searching for things that will prove Mr. On God's innocence all day, right? W well, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna help you, pal. I've got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. And I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's let Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Uh, uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap and healthy foods? That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like he didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. He said that? That's horrible! But because of him doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. Miss Andrew's last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony itself, but I still think there is something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. I mean about that thing, pal. Why would she want to... No, I mean almost need to frame a stronger. I couldn't figure that out from anything she said all day. Then... then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se. It just feels like there's more here than meets the eye. Well, that's what Edgeworth would like us to believe. Th that's such a dirty trick. Even that woman prosecutor was better than that. Francisca Von Karma. Speaking of Ms. Von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Ms. Von Karma was shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol, pal. But she's gonna be fine, right? I mean, Edgeworth said she was in stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. They should be done taking the bullet out, so she's probably resting at the hospital. Which one? What? Are you gonna visit her, pal? N no well, I was kind of thinking about it. Hey, you've actually got a heart, don't you? She looked like she was being tortured to death not being able to go to the trial today. So maybe it'd do a good, some, be good for her if you went there and let her whip you for a bit, pal. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick. Now I'm definitely not going. Um, let's see. The name of the hospital. Oh yeah, the Hottie Clinic. That name sends a chill down my spine. Well, I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. March 22nd, Hottie Clinic, reception. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Hmm, yes, you here to visit a patient? Hmm. Ah, hi. Wait a second, you're... Hmm, yes, I'm Director Hottie. Ho <laughs> ho. Why are you still here? Hmm, yes, what is it? Hmm, can I help you? You can tell me. Hmm, yes. Director Hottie. 
Oh, it's Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. Edgeworth. <laughs> the Golden Phoenix. Uh, Edgeworth? Hmm, yeah, some director hottie. Ho ho. Oh, Golden Man from this morning. Hmm, yes. What is it? Uh huh. Director. Franziska. How is Franziska von Karma? Hmm, you don't need to worry. Hmm, yeah, she's in good hands. Because, you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. Hmm, yes. <laughs> Hmm, yes, and that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my gratitude. It looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. She looked so pitiful, absolutely terrified. Hmm, yes. But I understand. Hmm, hmm, yes, her opponent was a gun after all. Uh-huh. And when I snuck up on her real secret like, she would scream really loud. Hmm, yes. I see. Ah, oh, she's really cute too. When I do that, she whip me with her whip. Uh huh. Boy, did I cry like a baby. Hmm. Yes. I think I could get used to it. Hmm. <laughs> Go back to your room. You're so mean. Uh huh. So mean, my frisky frisker. That's good too. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I. Hmm. Yes. It's time for my IV drops. Hmm. Yeah, IV drops. What? Does that make sense? Like, uh, 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 when you think of drops, I think like eye drops or something, but an IV is, you know, it's a different thing. Hmm, yes. I don't know, it sounds different. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix, right? Ugh, I knew I shouldn't have come here. I've lost shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. Hmm, but it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. I even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. But, but that would have been too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He, he was so unyielding, one has to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my case. It was the only logical course of action given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But by taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you in that irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ongard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof that I made such a deal? Y you're denying it? Looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix, right? If I had been in court today, this trial would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrew's own crime? That isn't my problem. Whether she had tampered with the evidence or not, I have only one objective, to find on guard guilty of murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix, right? The end justifies the means. Ms. Von Karma. Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then Ongar will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she's now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was... Ow! I think visiting hours here are about over. So, if you'll excuse me. What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. Edgeworth. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Andrew's condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far? Ah, uh, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right? The courtroom is a garden of judgment. I am putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. By the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Witness, that card. Give it to me. Hurry. 
you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. That card. Why in the world is it? You mean this? Listen, right. This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. A special investigations team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. Uh, I understand. Their task is to find the owner of this card. A man called Shelley DeKiller. And just as his name states, he is a killer. An assassin. The best at that. An assassin? Picture card added to the court record. So who is this Shelley DeKiller? DeKiller is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about a hundred years ago, I hear. Shelley is the professional name of the third heir to the DeKiller name. So because his professional name is Shelley, he leaves cards with a shell on them? He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it is a part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is one honourable assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even honourable assassins can exist. So, you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelley the killer, huh? I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess I should just tell him. Maya, she's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? What does the kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. R really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? M Mr. Edgeworth is going to... Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth. I don't need your pity. M Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. We don't even have a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I... I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right, listen. You need to know something. Juan Corridor was killed by Shelley DeKiller. And the client who ordered the job is Matt on guard. Your own client. Please stop. I can't listen to you. I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue investigation, you will need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only, as we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelley DeKiller. But if you take this with you to the, to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Letter of introduction into the court record. In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again if anything should happen. Now if you'll excuse me. Mr. Nick? Do you... Do you think Mr. Ongard hired an assassin? No way. I mean, he doesn't have a psyche lock. Y yeah, I guess not. Maya. Please, all I ask is you make it home safe and sound. Date, unknown. Time, unknown. Location, unknown. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even though he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that up, like how Nick does with everything in court. Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. Click. Sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. Date, unknown. Time, unknown. Location, unknown. What is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way, I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. 
That's weird. What's a figurine doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear? Oh, how cute! But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, it looks like something's written here. Let's see. I think it says, With love, Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before. Now, where's the power button? Hmm. Click. Phooey, it's busted. I would so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Ack! I can't believe I just made a joke about dying, all things considered. Oh dear. Ugh, locked, of course. And it doesn't look like I can use the card to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through there. What is this thing? An antenna, I guess. And this is... a VCR? There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. But what is an antenna doing here? Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I would suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways? You mean... Dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, correct? d d, -d, -d dad I'm almost certain I told you in our first meeting. I am... an assassin. N no way, you're lying. I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. Nick! March 22nd, 7.04pm. Hottie Clinic. Reception. Mr. Nick? Hmm? Oh yes, Pearls? Got quite a few my thoughts about Maya's situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know. I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. Ongard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright, let's get going too. Okay. March 22nd, Detention Centre. Visitor's Room. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Oh. Ugh, I have too, too many questions I need to ask. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say? Oh, yeah. There's a message here for you. A message? It's from Matt Ongard. Ah, here you are. What did he write? Is it something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has, what it has to say? Oh, the message, yeah, it. Right. To Mr. Lawyer Dude, I've got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright. So actually, I have a favor to ask of you. I have this cat named Chu. I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed Chu for me, dude? My house is just a little ways down from the hotel, alright? This is terrible! Let's hurry! We have to feed his cat! I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now! Y yeah I guess. Matt's note jammed into a pocket. A client's request is a request. Guess you should go check up on his cat. Of course you should. You should go help his cat. Very important. Did we go to the hotel? March 22nd Gate Water Hotel, Hotel Lobby. Alright now, Mr. Nick. Let's go look for clues. We have to, for Mystic Maya's sake. You shall not pass. <gasps> Miss Oldbag! Don't devalue my name and turn into a gasp, you spiky-headed pedifogger. Because of you, I've been made look like the bad guy again. Although, I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, this is the promise. What I really wanted was something much more valuable, and Edgy Crew's heart, I want it all for me. It's all your fault! You've awakened the wild beast inside of this old bag. Ah! 
Ah, Miss Oldbag. Keep your hands off me. This helmet is airtight. No air gets, no airs gets in, and no air gets out. Airs gets in. Typo. And no air gets out. Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Hmm. Don't think you can get me to move with silly questions. You're gonna have to defeat me if you wanna get by. I'm not hearing this. Okay, we're gonna go to uh, Matt's house first, which is over here. March 22nd, on guard mansion, living room. Hmm, sure is dark. I'll go turn on a light. Wow, so this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick, let's find Shu the kitty cat. Shu. Meow. So I guess this is Shu. Oh, what a lovely cat. Hello, Shu. Tee-hee. The cat seems to like pearls. Pardon me. May I help you with something, Mr. Oh, uh, we're lawyers. Actually, I'm Mr. On Guard's lawyer. The Masters. Then, you'll see Mr. Wright. I yes Ah, uh, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. Nice to meet you. Meow. Hmm. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. Ongar, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm, I typically butler-like, as it were. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say, maybe about one year? And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. You know, I would have thought Mr. On Guard the kind to have a maid over a butler. That's a very cute cat you've got here. It is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancies Shu. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for lowly servant to speak of the family cat. <laughs> well then, I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Matt's note crumpled into a ball and thrown away. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Ah, so young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. But there's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler, in charge of the house and all. Thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. Okay, that's about all we can do here for the moment. And yes, obviously that's the, the assassin, it's the same person. It's super obvious. I think we're supposed to know that, honestly. Uh, yeah, I'll talk, I don't want to talk to Wendy. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just, just give it a note. Hmm, maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Um, Miss Oldbag, if you would look at... What? You want me to look at this worthless piece of... Hedgy poo? Ugh, is that a perfume? Pheromone d'amour, I smell? Ugh. Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Y yours truly? Hm, <laughs> that man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Edgy Poo said so, you understand? Letter of introduction given to Miss Albright. I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad, and I won't let you off the hook. It looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing's gonna come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Ow. Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. Um, so anyway, let's continue our investigation. Okay. rat a tap 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 Ah! What? What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go into On Guard's room today. Why? The police's main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? On 
wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. So don't go in there. Set one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Wendy Old Bag. Okay, well we won't go in there then. Mark 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scouring for clues about the killer. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Hallway. Hey city boy. Lotta? You are still here? Wrecking course. An investigative photographer eats or starves in her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah? And this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, like something's always about to happen. But, do you have a camera? Wreck given. Photocop photographers gotta have cameras out the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feeding them, feeding the mouth, do you have mine, you, breed, you bread thief? Why can't you drop that thief thing already? Lotta, what are you doing here? This this hotel is closed except for like the cops or whatever. I mean, a cab. But how did you get in? I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You're really gonna shell out the bucks for the info I got? Lotta, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kinda. But brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know. Bought a few stars around. Got a few autographs. Shook a few hands. Had a soda pop with a few of them too. <sighs> Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security lady also wasn't in this hallway the whole time either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came and went that night. So, about the note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that Didi I wrote? Yeah. Can I believe what you've written? You mean the stuff about Ongard shoving his manager lady on the corridor? Yeah. Uh, well, I reckon you best not be believing that. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bulldoodles. Hey, what's with ya? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Hmm. Hey, and why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I just drinking here? Hmm. Ah, my baby. My $1,600 baby. What's with that red-coated prosecutor anyhow? The guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey, you're that red-coat's friend, ain't ya? So put in a good few good words for me and get me back my camera. Y you want me to do what? Listen, now you got real good for about five hours and I guarantee you'll give it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Um, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'll see you then. And you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring it right to me, yeah. Would you please just leave already? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Corridor's Hotel Room. Uh, who is that? Oong. I don't know who's talking, so I don't know what voice to use. Mr. Nick! What is that otherworldly, ghastly moaning? Uh, I hate evil ghosts. I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon? Uh, excuse me? What are you calling a demon, brat? Ah! Zoinks! It's the alien! Who are you calling an alien? rat a tat 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 Oh, it's just you, Miss Holbag. What are you doing here? What is wrong with young'uns today? I came down here to pay my respects to my poor swan, and you're disturbing me. 
please talk to me about the night of the murder. Just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by that fraud of photographer and her note. She was loitering around here with that imbecilic look on her face. With that imbecilic look on her face? Okay, got it. Now hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're gonna take notes, at least make me sound better than that. Oh, alright. Now I've seen everything. But, you know, I was working that night too, doing my job, minding my own business. So it's not like I had time to waste standing around here the whole night. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Corridor. He's the most popular star, you know, especially where it counts, in my book. <laughs> That's a great line. But I heard that he was lagging behind in the polls against Mr. Ongard. Um, well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know? But he was going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presents. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain is pretty big and certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick? Hmm? What is it, Pearls? The presents, they're all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. All of Mr. Corridor's presents from his fans seem to be... bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of Juan without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know? When my dear Juan was training, he fought bare-handed with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win, but after the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a heartwarming story. Look, it's just like in those young people's dramas. I can see those two tuck it out, down by a river going, Huh, you, you sure can fight. You too, bub. You too. Did, did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock. So ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. <laughs> I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely eight o'clock. What is that infernal racket? <laughs> it's one of the presents going off. Sounds like it's already 8pm. Way past your bedtime. Ugh, that startled me. I thought I was going to die for a second. 8pm. That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time sure flies. Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. The transceiver. Hello? Hello? This is not a phone. Maya, how is Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? It seems you were not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news, so it would seem my present did you no good. N no! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! One more day, please. All I ask is for one more day. I... I'll get a not guilty verdict for sure this time, please. I suppose if I must. I need that acquittal more than anything else, after all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear she's alright. Alright. Then... A little... What is with this static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems... Bad... Just... Connect... Damn it, did the transceiver just suddenly break? Excuse me. Beep. What happened? I don't know, all of a sudden it became nothing but static. Uh, Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? I should probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner the better. Okay, yeah, we need to get someone to look at it. Um... I don't know if I'd say an electronics expert, because I know who needs to look at it, and... I don't think he's an expert, but... Maybe he is, I don't know. Uh... March 22nd, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Wow, everybody looks really busy with something or another. Hmm, they're probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial. Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass that victims list around. You gotta be kidding, that's over a hundred people on here. 
Um, Miss Snake? Is Mr. Ongard really that big and bad of a criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. It sounds like they're working on a different case. We want to go back to the office. Here we go. March 22nd, Wright and Co. Law Offices. Hey, welcome back, pal. I thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. That's nice, thanks. A rich man's luxurious full course meal. Out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have the time to eat. Oops, looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You've got to be kidding me. And here I thought he'd already whipped something up. Oh, I know. There is one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try asking him about. We're gonna ask him about the transceiver. The transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick. You should ask Mr. Scrappy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh, yeah, this thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It... it broke, pal? When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. Beep. I don't hear any static, pal. H huh? Maybe it fixed itself. That's strange. I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. Hmm. Maybe... Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference? Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? Phoenix, y you're an adult. You're, you're a lawyer. What, why don't you know this? <laughs> it's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, you're allowed to not understand. You're a tiny child, and you haven't been to a real school. So you've never learned about electromagnetic interference. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen, the stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? No. No, no, you, you were describing a thing that, like, a CRT would do. A modern screen would not do that. Huh? Computer? Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh, yes, the TV does do that. Hmm. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So, the room you were in when that interfere the room you were in when that interference with the transceiver happened. There's got to be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. Something like, hmm, like a listening device or something. Ah. Oh. Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Corridor's room. The scene of the murder. What? That's it. I'm going to sneak into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, all right, pal? Oh, wait. Gumshoe. Oh, yeah, baby. It's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah. <laughs> we should be going too, Mr. Nick. All right, let's go. Okay, so yeah, we've got to do some bug sweeping at the scene of the crime. To the scene of the crime. <laughs> it's a bit of a walk. There we go. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel. Corridor's hotel room. Hey, you're finally here, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. Do you have the, um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. Then suddenly I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So, yeah, I couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't get one, just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper. Looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, by who? Me, of course. Oh, seeing this sure brings back memories. Okay, so Gumshoe maybe is an electronics expert, because I didn't build anything like that in primary in elementary school, but it's very impressive. Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up, but I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But... But... But you can't set sensitivity. 
so it's gonna beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? <laughs> well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use this baby. There's a listening device or some other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're gonna find it, right? Right, now, first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give them a real thorough looky-see, pal. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal is picking up, so keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something giving off a lot of the radio waves, press the A button to lock onto it. There's a lot of things here that's gonna give off radio waves, so let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? Alright, I'm gonna go stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? Okay, so we have the little bug sweeper here. You can get sweeping. You can see, okay, um, in the DS version, in the 3DS version, it had, like, a horizontal bar on, at the top of the screen that, like, filled up, but in this one, it's just, like, a signal around the bug sweeper itself. A cell phone. Nope, no bugs in here. A cell phone? What? Don't tell me you don't know what a cell phone is. I'm sorry, I've never seen one before. Now that she mentions it, my cell phone couldn't get any reception while I was staying in Kurain Village, and Pulse has never lived outside of that village, so... Well, I guess I can't say it's impossible to live without one. Could we tell her what it is? We didn't tell her what it is. Hmm. Oh, what a lovely bear! Wow. Ah! Ah, this must be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's a robot? It's a real robot? I yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Nick! I yes? H how many horsepowers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um, well, look, it's a bear, so, uh... Um... How many horsies? Well, the phone is the most common place for a listening device, I'd say. But let's take the receiver apart first before we get ahead of ourselves here. Wow, you know a lot about electronics, don't you, Mr. Nick? Yeah, I know tons, especially when it comes to taking them apart. It's my specialty. I'll leave the fixing part up to Gumshoe. So, is there a listening device in there? No. And I really thought it had to be in the phone, too. You know, I wouldn't think that this would give off really strong ra radio waves, because it's just a receiving device. It's a, it's a boombox. The radio is on and playing something. Oh, it's Kids Question Corner. Professor, Professor, why is the Earth round? Yes, why is it, Mr. Nick? Why don't you listen to the radio program a little more, Pearls? Does Nick not know? <laughs> I don't really think the listening device is in the TV of all places. Looks like the TV was left on and it's now showing an old samurai movie. Yeah, this channel plays all sorts of international movies as well as domestic ones. You know, every time I watch one of these old movies, I always think, Wow, these Japanese stars are really good at English. Um, yeah. When I grow up, I want to study Japanese. I should probably keep my mouth shut here and not destroy her dream. I'm guessing in the original version of the game, like, she wanted to study English, but then they changed it back around, because obviously the game is shown in Japan. Well, the listening device is near the air conditioner. Ah, yuck! This air filter is covered in dust and dirt! Y yeah Come on, Mr. Nick, let's wash it! I wonder if being a neat freak makes even the tiniest dust bunny look colossal. What? Oh, oh, nothing. Lamp, check. Listening device, nope. There are a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah. And they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll be more conscientious from now on. Sorry. I think this is the same one. Yeah, same. You don't need to look at all these things, but I thought you might enjoy seeing what Pearl had to say, because she's adorable. Uh, I know the thing you actually do have to look at. We'll get to it in a bit. Oh, the water in this hot water pot has run out. I'll go get more water for it. Okay, sounds good. Looks like she's forgotten all about looking for the listening device. This is a, a refrigerator, right? I really don't think the listening device is in something like this. 
because it's filled with nothing but healthy vegetable juices, right? Uh, yeah, sure. What does that have to do with listening devices? What's this? It sort of looks like a hot water pot, but... Oh, well, it's kind of like a hot water pot, I guess? But instead of hot water, coffee comes out. Really? Th th this pot can do that? Um, is there a pot that orange juice comes out of? I don't think there's anything like that, pearls. Sorry. Oh, she's so cute. Uh, doesn't seem to be anything giving off radio webs there, Mr. Nick. Keep a careful eye on the bug sweeper and let's try again. The sweeper isn't exactly the best. Well, make do with what you have, right? It's a plain old calculator. It says 50 on it. Maybe he was calculating his allowance? A whole 50 cents? Ugh, maybe if, there, if he was a spirit medium. There's a head right here as well. Uh, this is completely digital, by the way. I, I told it just a little bit. It still goes, like, at the same speed. It's pretty annoying. It's the TV's remote control, but it doesn't look like listening devices in here. Um, so I was thinking. I wonder if a TV remote works on other things, like... Could I make you change your expressions like TV channels? Zap! Hey! Hmm, but if I could, who the people I would give the old mute button to? Well, I don't think it's gonna work on me. Why don't we try it on Maya tomorrow, okay? Okay! Cute. What's this? It's a small video camera. No listening device in this gizmo. Everyone's trying to make everything smaller and smaller lately, aren't they, Mr. Nick? That's what it seems like. But, I want to grow bigger and bigger. Well, eating only vegetables isn't going to help you there. You have to eat meat too. There's no listening device in that notebook computer, huh? Um, what's a notebook computer? Do you know what a notebook is? Yes, it's a small book with paper that you can write on. So? Well, that thing is like a notebook in a way. It's basically a small laptop. Um, Mr. Nick, what's a laptop? Uh, you gonna tell her? Uh, that clock doesn't have anything in it. This one does. Well, it certainly looks like an alarm clock. What's wrong? Why do you look troubled? I just can't imagine a listening device being inside this alarm clock. It just, um, sort of reminded me of something that happened a long time ago. Oh. Well, anyway, it looks like the listening device isn't in here. Wow, there's a really delicious loaf of bread in here. Looks like it's been on keep warm all this time since the murder. Well, Mr. Scrappy Detective always says, gotta keep the tra trail and crime scene warm. I think the keep warm in that case is a little more metaphorical. Okay, um, I think I looked at everything except the thing we're supposed to look at now, so let's continue. <laughs> Just wanna make sure, I don't wanna miss anything. Yeah, we've done everything. Uh, there is a hairdryer there, but I don't think I can look at it. Maybe I can, hang on. And here we have a dryer. Nothing unusual here, I think. A dryer? Oh, if you use an extra TV, it'll make the screen look all weird, right? Y yeah. And when that happens, it's called electromagnetic interference, right? Hey, good memory, Pearls. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. Oh, she's so happy. I love you, Pearls. Okay, uh, that is everything. That is now everything that we wanted to look at. So the thing we actually need to look at is this bear. This is... this is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you guys find it yet? The listening device? Uh, the listening device, I mean. No, not yet, but this bear's eye is... Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's dig this big fella's eye out and see what we've got. No, you can't! Such such a violent act! I love you, Pearls. I will protect you with my very life. Oomph! No! That's... It's a miniature camera. It looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A water war emitter? You know what a transmitter is, Phoenix. A transmitter, pal. Oh, is this more of that high-tech stuff? 
So this tiny thing is a camera? Yep, it's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's a small, high-grade video camera, mostly used in security systems. So it's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. Oh, so dated. <laughs> this is only the camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the tape inside is somewhere else. Somewhere else? The footage is changed into radio waves and it's sent to that recorder. So, it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. The spy camera entered the court record. Charles is very smart. So, what is a transmitter? Phoenix, come on. <laughs> it's a device that sends the footage the camera took to a specified specific destination. It's like a video version of a listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small, clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to turn the camera on and record a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yup, let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8pm and go for one hour. 8pm? That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I'd guess. M Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape? W what And if you think about the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Transmitter added to the court record. What about the bear? So there was a camera in this bear's eye? And it was disguised as a present. And I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Coral to this present? I, uh, I don't know, pal. But this means that someone out there has got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio webs can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. <laughs> is there really no way to find out? Stuff there out of the court record. I got it! What? Hey, pal, let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. W what are you gonna do? I'm gonna go around to electronic shops and see if I can find out who bought this. But, but that's impossible! I mean, it's already 9pm! Leave it to me. Even if I have to search all night, I'll find your man, pal. Spy camera and transmitter given to Detective Gumby. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal, my fingers are itching to go. Yeah! <laughs> He's gone. Yeah. But Mr. Scrubby Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Ack! You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. E Edgeworth? What are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward one step at a time. Uh, I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. So, there was a spy camera hidden inside this stuffed animal, huh? You are one lucky man, right? Do you know the stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. Hmm. Of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade, and only a small number of these are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. C can you really do that? Mr. Nick, can he really? Well, I guess so. Hmm, it's 9pm. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. Stuffed bear snatched up by Edgeworth. See you soon, right? W wait What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, right? Until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corridor? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To 
be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. Chuan Corridor is a real killer. Miss Andrew's past. The kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. Ongard. And this card, Shelley the Killer. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. To be continued. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, especially when Pearls was being super cute and precious because I love her. Uh, next time we do some more investigation.